Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are going to make some hamburger buns. And unlike a lot of the keto recipes that you see out there for buns and breads, we're not going to rely on Vita Wheat Gluten to make these awesome. So, gluten-free. This recipe is one that I have been collaborating on with one of my viewers, Don, aka Calgary Guy. And by collaborating, I mean he did most of the work, and I just kind of wrote his coattails. Over the last six weeks, we've been going back and forth on email, each doing different variations of the recipe, trying to find that sort of magic, perfect bun that had a nice yeasty taste, a decent rise, a decent chew, and would be hearty enough that it would hold up to a nice, juicy hamburger. I've probably done eight or nine different variations on this recipe over that time, and I suspect Don has done double that. So before you ask any substitution questions, I'm going to have to tell you, I kind of feel like we've got it dialed in. And it is what it is. If you want to make any substitutions, go right ahead, but do so at your own risk. If, however, you come up with something that's way better than what we did, please let us know down in the comments, because I'm sure Don and I are going to continue tweaking this recipe and trying to make it even better. One last thing before we get going. Don mixes this by hand. I'm going to use a food processor for two reasons. One, I just like using a food processor when I'm dealing with anything that's dough because it goes really fast. Plus, I got a new food processor for Father's Day. It's pretty sweet. Yes, I am finally able to sunset that 26-year-old food processor that's held together with marine glue. So, I'll be using a food processor. If you want to mix by hand, go ahead. I'm sure Don will probably chime in down in the comments and give any sort of tips that he might have for that. In addition to sharing the volume measurements, you know, like cups and tablespoons and things like that, for my non-US viewers, I will also be showing the weights. So I will measure this out on a scale, real time. If you're not making this recipe by weight, you can just go ahead and dump your tablespoons and cups right into the food processor. You don't need to use a separate bowl for measuring. And now, because we're using yeast and we want a nice warm environment where our yeast can rise, we're going to preheat our oven. Preheat it to its lowest possible setting. On mine, that's 200 degrees, but if you recall from the oven calibration video, when it beeps and says it's ready, it's still probably not anywhere near 200 degrees. So turn it on, let it start to warm up for maybe five minutes tops, and then turn it off. We just want to create a warm environment where our buns can rise. We'll start by proofing our yeast. I have one cup or 237 milliliters of water and we want this to be in the 110 to 115 degree range. That would be like 44, 45 degrees Celsius. To this you can add one teaspoon of honey, honey will be consumed by the yeast, leaving a net zero carb situation. If you're concerned, however, you can use inulin, which is a prebiotic fiber that yeast still consumes like sugar. Then we'll add one teaspoon of our active dry yeast. We'll stir to combine. And we'll set this aside to proof while we get our dry ingredients ready. Now in terms of proofing the yeast, I got out onto the King Arthur website and found out that if you are using active dry yeast, you don't need to proof. And in fact, they say that the term proofing actually came from the word proving. You were proving whether your yeast was still alive or not. If it started to foam, then your yeast was alive and you could count on your bread to rise. If your yeast wasn't foaming, then you probably need some new yeast. So while I am going to proof the yeast here, you do not need to do this if you have active dry yeast, unless you just want to test to make sure that your yeast is still good. We'll start with whole psyllium husks, not psyllium husk powder, whole psyllium husks. This is important if you want to be making buns instead of hockey pucks. We have one quarter cup or about 20 grams. Then we have unflavored whey protein isolate. Hit the tear button. Two tablespoons. Or about nine grams. Next, we have two tablespoons of oat fiber. Or about 14 grams. 
two tablespoons of coconut flour. And because I forgot to hit my tear button, I hate it when that happens, got to do a little math, that's probably going to be around 18 or 19 grams. Then we have one and a quarter cups of almond flour. Do not pack this, just sort of scoop and sweep. That's about 130, 131 grams. One teaspoon of fine sea salt. And it's food processor time. We'll dump our dry ingredients into the food processor. And then we're gonna give this six to eight pulses, just to mix it up. We don't really wanna start pulverizing those psyllium husks. To this, we're going to add three egg whites, or six tablespoons of liquid egg white from a carton. That would be 90 milliliters for those of you doing metric. And then one tablespoon, or 15 milliliters, of extra virgin olive oil. We'll pulse this together another six to eight times to kind of get it to the texture that you'd like to see for a pie crust. There we go. It's a nice sort of crumble. Meanwhile, you can see that our yeast is looking all nice and foamy. So we are going to turn on our food processor and pour this in fairly rapidly. And stop. It's still gonna look very, very soupy at this point. Don't worry about it. At this point, I like to transfer it to a bowl to rest for a couple of minutes. It's a lot easier to scoop out of a bowl and make your buns than it is to get out of the food processor. So we'll just use our same measuring vessel that we used when we were getting our weights. Then I give this a little pat down to just sort of make it uniform. It helps a little bit when I'm trying to get out portions that are fairly equal sized for my buns. We're gonna let this sit for five or 10 minutes just so it can firm up a little bit. Makes it easier to make our buns. Now we're gonna shape our buns. I tend to do four buns. I like my burgers pretty big, but you could probably get away with doing as many as six. It's also easier for me to eyeball what one quarter of this looks like. So with wet hands, scoop out the dough and very gently, back and forth, kind of roll into a ball until it's nice and smooth. And then set it down as a full ball. Do not flatten this out. It's gonna flatten out on its own. Looks like this last one's gonna be kind of ginormous. Probably should have done five. And then we'll pop these into our warm oven and let them rise for the next hour. All right, it has been just about an hour, so we're gonna take our buns out of the oven. you'll notice that they've kind of flattened out a little bit here. Unlike regular flour dough, this behaves a little bit more like cookie dough. You kind of have the leavening of the yeast, trying to lift it up, while meanwhile you have the weight of the dough sort of spreading it out. Additionally, I only used one teaspoon of yeast. I saw while these were rising that in Don's recipe, he uses a teaspoon and a half. So while it's too late for me to go back and correct that in this video, I will make sure that it's correct on the recipe on my website, which, as usual, is linked below in the description. For now, though, we are going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees or 177 Celsius. We'll let the oven go at least 10 minutes past the time that it says that it's preheated, just to make sure that we're fully up to temp. And we'll pop these into the oven.
At about a half an hour, when my buns are starting to get golden, I will tent with some aluminum foil. Otherwise, the tops of the buns can get a little bit too dark for my tastes. We'll let this go for another 20 to 30 minutes, and then we'll pull them out. It has been one hour. Got a pretty nice color on our buns there. We'll transfer them to a wire rack and let them cool for at least an hour before we slice into them. All right, while my burger is frying up behind me, we'll slice this in half. Look at that. Oh my goodness. It's soft, it's spongy, and it's sturdy. Throw a tomato slice on the bottom. Spread a little homemade mayo on the top. By the way, I'll link to that mayo recipe right there. Plop on our burger patty. Tiny little drizzle of yellow mustard. And a little bit of white onion. I'm gonna slice this in half just for the Instagram pic. Wow. Look at that. Juicy. And now, the taste test. Mm. This is a hearty bun right here. And even where it's completely soaked with the beef juice, it's still holding together, it's not falling apart. If you've been eating your burgers with a lettuce bun, prepare to have your world change rather significantly. This is a great burger bun. And once again, this is one of those recipes that you could give to your non-keto, non-low-carb friends, and they would never know that this is keto and that this is gluten-free. Now, you might be wondering if this same recipe could be used for a hot dog bun or a sausage roll. I'm gonna say probably not. And in fact, the hot dog bun that I'm working on is only very partially based upon this recipe. This creates a fairly dense, fairly hearty bun. And honestly, I think if I made a bratwurst bun out of this, I'd be hard pressed to even get halfway finished. So when the hot dog bun comes around, hopefully by the end of the summer, it will be a lighter, whiter bun. Anyhow, I'm glad that I could get this out to you by 4th of July. I hope you have the ingredients. Most of the ingredients that are in this are kind of pantry staples if you do any sort of keto baking. So I hope you have a chance to enjoy them this weekend. Now, if you like this video, click that like button. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified whenever I release a new video, hit the bell and select all notifications. And finally, if you'd like to help contribute to the success of the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, click the join button and see what the membership options are all about. Thanks for watching.